Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, The Rise of the Micro Brands. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. All right, so for today's show, we're going to have two guests, Don Hennig and Rob Stanley from Amazon funding platform Acrumi. So we're going to be talking about just Amazon funding, the advantages, the disadvantages, how to grow uh, quickly and scale your business, increase profits. So we're going to cover a ton of stuff. But before we do that, how about we get Kelsey in here? Hello, happy Monday. Well, happy Monday to you, sir. All right, so let's get right into it. If you guys are new to the show, you can find all of the information, all the replays, all the highlights on our YouTube channel. Just search Norman Ferrar and you'll be able to find it. And we do have a couple fun things going on right now. Um, yes, smash the like button, of course, and uh, share the video. Um, but we do have a great giveaway. We are giving away a pair of AirPods. Um, this is for U.S. residents only, but if you are interested, all the information is in the links um, wherever you're watching, whether that's from Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Um, as well, uh, if you guys are interested in writing a review, you can. I'll put the link in the comments, and if you guys write a review, we'll put it up onto our, uh, or we'll read it out to you guys uh, just to say thanks. But it looks like we have Fatiha joining us. Welcome, hey, welcome. We have Marina, Marina and Simon. Simon, and how are you? Yeah. So we have two weeks that the podcast or the AirPod contest is running from. Um, so you got lots of time to do that. And we'll announce the winner on the podcast in our special fan episode on the 22nd, I believe. Okay, very good. So as like Kelsey was mentioning, if you are hearing this podcast uh, and it is on a replay, just skip ahead, get rid of all this, how, uh, how, what is, what, what do we call this house cleaning, whatever we call it. Anyways, skip that. ahead, get a red, just get right into the meat of it. And also you can also go over, if you're listening on my profile page over to AKA Norm Ferrar, the beard guy, and you'll get the whole episode, you'll get content, you'll get video content and all that good stuff. So let's get right into this. How about All we right. sit back, we relax, we have a cup of coffee, and enjoy the podcast. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, Norm. Hey, I, I was hearing a second ago just a big hum, but it's just gone away. I'm not sure if that, uh, I'm not sure what that was. But uh, anyways, I'll let you know if I hear it again. Maybe it's just Rob humming a tune. I don't know. Uh, Don, Don's fan. <laughs> Don's fan's going out on his laptop. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, so. hey, guys, uh, why don't we tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourselves and a little bit about Acure Me? Sure. Uh, I'll start off, Rob. Yeah, go for it, Don. So, so this is Don Hennig. Uh, you know, I've been an entrepreneur. I'm not an e-commerce guy. I got into this industry just a couple of years ago after retiring for the third time. I uh, took five years off the last, last time and... Uh, got excited about Amazon and Amazon sellers. And it's one of the things I love to do uh, is help small businesses and help people, especially young people, you know, get into their own businesses and grow businesses. So this just seemed like such a great opportunity and uh, got me out of retirement, uh, which has been exciting. I'm working my ass off. I'm having fun. We're doing great things. We're helping people every day. And it's just really a lot of fun. Uh, so Rob, maybe... You go next. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Rob Stanley. I'm chief marketing officer at Acrumi. And uh, gosh, my background's pretty long, as Norm probably knows. <laughs> but just to uh, kind of simplify it, uh, I've had e-commerce businesses for over 20 years, Amazon business in 2013. And I sold in 2018, sold my other e-commerce business in 2018. So two seven-figure businesses sold in 2018. Uh, as people may know, I was also chief marketing officer for Feedback Wiz up until a couple months ago when I decided to make the jump over to Krumi. That was that was the quickest I've ever. I seen. know. Well, because if I give you the long version, we're going to be here for a while. So, you know how it is. Norm. <laughs> yeah, By the way, Norm, I, the intro. I love the intro, man. I'm stealing that from my stream yard. And really, that was a great intro. I got to get that going. <laughs> 
Oh, I, very good. Thanks. My my other son wrote that. But uh, uh, yeah, oh, that's great. Uh, all right, so let's start talking about this. Okay. So talking about Amazon sellers, how they can, well, it's all about cash flow, right? Uh, you don't have the cash flow, you, you really can't grow anywhere. So how can um, utilizing a service, and I don't want to be specific to a service like yours, but uh, going out and finding additional funds help an Amazon seller? Well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in first. You know, anytime you see a company that is profitable, if you're profitable, it most likely makes sense to leverage your, your capital and to get more capital and, you know, just grow it. If you're not profitable, it's the last thing you should do. So as a general rule of thumb, if, if you're profitable and getting more capital can help you be more profitable, such as I can go out and create more products, I can buy more inventory, I know what I'm doing, then you should absolutely go ahead and do it. But is there the, the sweet spot? You know, when you should, when you shouldn't? You know, you can be on the fence, right? And it, it could be the worst opportunity of your life. Um, or it could be the best opportunity of your life. Can you get into that a little bit more? Well, you know, I think it, a lot of it also comes down to who you are personally and, and you know, what you're comfortable with. But when, when you're looking to grow your business and you have a model that already works and you're already making money and you can see the opportunities in front of you, I talk to people all the time. I have this opportunity and that opportunity and, you know, multiple. I have guys that, you know, have uh, new products uh, on their board that go, you know, a mile long, like 70 new products that they need to roll out, but they don't have the capital. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're helping them grow their business in ways that they couldn't. Uh, others where, you know, young, husband and wife team that retired and, you know, all of a sudden their, their retirement went away. And they started their Amazon business and after a year doing well, but they didn't have the capital to grow it. And now they have the capital to grow it. And they increased in one year, they increased their revenue by sixfold and their profit by eightfold. And they never could have done it without us. And they, you know, they proudly say that. So, you know, but if you're uncomfortable with growth, if you're uncomfortable with taking that leap, you know, because using somebody else's capital, it can be uncomfortable if you're, you know, if you're not really sure of yourself, then you probably shouldn't do it. You know, that'd be my two cents. Yeah, yeah. a lot of uh, Amazon sellers, though, uh, this is the, either their first business or this is their, I should say, their first uh, entrepreneurial adventure, right? So they are a little nervous. Um moving ahead with getting somebody else or using somebody else's cash. I love using somebody else's cash. Give me cash all day long. I love it. But you, you do have to have, you have to get into that comfort zone. But there's good debt and bad debt, isn't there? Yes. So why don't we talk a little bit about that? Well, you know, uh, th that's really what got us into this and how we came up with this whole model. So you know our model that will double your capital with no interest, no required monthly payments, and no loss of ownership. It's revolutionary. It's never been done before. And you know, how did we come up with it? We looked at what the options were for Amazon sellers, and we did the analysis, and we didn't like anything that we saw. And the main reason, and this is exactly what you're asking about, is that the monthly payments were so high that the seller couldn't make any money. And you, know, you don't necessarily know that when you're borrowing that money. So we did all the analysis and we said, holy cow, how do we change this? And we came up with the idea of let's temporarily partner with the seller. So we're their partner for a short period of time, however long they need our money. We don't own the company. We only get a percentage of profits. So there's no interest rate charge and there's no required payments. So if you think about it, when they're flush with cash, they're going to pay us. And when they're growing by leaps and bounds, they're going to use every bit of the money. And the last thing they want to do is send us a check. They're going to want to use all that money to grow when they have the opportunity in front of them, typically in Q3 and Q4, you know, for most sellers. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Let me, ahead, let me jump in there. Too. Yeah. And let's talk about also like what the requirements are to get funding from us, because I think that's important to put it up front before we start jumping into like how it works and everything. 
So what we're looking for is people that have been in business for a minimum of six months selling on Amazon, FBA specifically at this time, that will change coming up. And we're looking for at least 10,000 in capital. So you gotta be at least uh, 10,000 in capital and profitable for at least six months. You got, need to be an LLC corporation in the United States. Now, if you are outside the United States, but selling in the US marketplace, as long as you have a US LLC and a tax ID or EIN number, that's fine also. And uh, obviously, uh, one of the other things that actually we keep forgetting to mention, Don, is, is you can't have any other loans. Uh, so you got to make sure that we're the only person. And, and I hate to use loan because we're not alone. We are growth partners. We're think profit sharing. We're there with you to help grow. So if you're not successful, we're not successful. All right. So I want to make that very clear so people understand. We are going nuts right now, Norm. I mean, we are getting tons of signups right now and it's just proving that our model is definitely the way to go compared to some of these other traditional loans that are out there you know by these other services what i love is so many people who come over norman they, they, go, they go this is brilliant <laughs> I love that. but you know i want to go back to one thing that robbie said about you know if you don't make money we don't make money that was really important this past year because you know going into the year in in 2020 you know, everybody was making money and doing well. But then, you know, come March, April, May, we had, you know, a, a number of private label sellers that all of a sudden fell off the table. They couldn't get their products in. They weren't making money and literally said, if I had to make payments right now, I would be out of business. And, and you know, we hung in there. We made no money, zero. But no bank was going to do that. Oh. So, Norm, to answer your question about you know, good money and bad money, right? I, I didn't mean to skip over that question. You know, when, when you're investing, there is good ways to invest and there's bad ways to invest. If you take our money and just stick it in the bank, that's bad. That's a bad way to borrow money. If you take our money and you buy more inventory to grow with it, that's a good way to do it. And there's a million other scenarios. I'm not gonna get into all of them, but yes, there is definitely different ways you can take that money and not be successful with it if you don't use it to make money. And like you said, Norm, Every big person out there that always talks about like using money to make money, there's there's definitely good ways to do it and bad ways. Right. So first of all, before we go on, just wanted to give a couple shout outs here to uh, David. He just joined us. Dowin's back. Oh, Victor's back. How are you, Victor? And oh, Sharon Evan is back. We just did a podcast with Sharon. I, I think it's probably the number one or number two downloaded podcast so far. So, uh, hey, Sharon, glad to see you're here. All, wow, all the way from Israel. Um, all right. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention to, to everybody, if you are new to the podcast, we'd love it. Absolutely love it. If you would just hit that like button, as Kelsey says, smash it. He should have said it by now, but he's got one job to do and he just didn't do it but smash that like button and subscribe to our channel okay let's talk about the differences between the different business models okay so you've got a cure me over here you've got all uh, like there's a bunch of other um, different types of funding services what are the different what's the difference between Amazon funding what's the difference between going to your local bank and doing it going over to um, like a seller's funding and in, in ping pong uh, those two types of funding and then to yours so all great ways of getting money just what's the difference so it's I'll, I'll jump in first Rob and then you, you can you can hit clean up clean up today <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know basically what we did uh, right from the start was we analyzed everything that we could find that was available out there for growth. So if you need money to just go from month to month and survive, we are not the ones for you. That's not for us. But if you have opportunities and you want to grow, then we are absolutely the best for you because you can use all the money. Instead of taking money out to make payments, you could use all the money to grow. So if you think about it, if you just you know use Amazon as the example, again, nothing wrong with Amazon. They actually came in second in our analysis behind us as far as the, the best uh, uh, funding source for growth. Uh, they didn't come close to us, but they still came in second, which is pretty good. But think about it. If you took out a loan from Amazon right now, I'm $100,000. By the time you got to Q3 and Q4, when you really need the money, how much would you have left? Maybe 30 grand, you know? So you're not having the money when you're growing. With us, 
you take out that hundred grand, you use it as you need, you pay it back as you as you as as is right for your business when it's right for your business. And then when you get to the times when you can really grow and you can knock that out of the park, like Q3 and Q4, not only are you not making payments, so you have more money available, but we'll actually give you more money. We'll help you during those growth periods to grow even more. So it, it's, it's a phenomenal, it, it's never been done, Norm. It's, it's very flexible. It's uh, uh, totally different from anything else. And it's really only for growth. It's not for working capital. Rob, you look like you're chomping at the bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always chomping at the bit. I, I know. I, I just know. wanted to mention, Norm, as you noticed, I think it was within the last week, uh, there was a couple of posts about Amazon making some changes to their loan, one mm -hmm. of them being personal guarantees. Uh, so to keep this really you know, recent and, and new, uh, we do not do personal guarantees. You do not do background checks, no personal guarantees, no monthly payments no interest. So people are probably thinking, well, that's crazy, right? It, which, yes, it is. But that's why I say we are partners with you, you know, in this. And, and we'll definitely go over a full scenario. But I wanted to make sure that people kind of knew, you know, what sets us apart. And, and Don's absolutely right. We've run the numbers. We've looked at everybody's scenarios, payability, seller's funding, both options from payability, seller's funding, and Amazon. And, and they came in a lot lower than we were. We're, we are the best option out there. And that's why we're getting inundated right now. You know what the yeah. issue is, Norm? Just to add on to that. And, and again, nothing against any of those guys. They're all good and they're all good for certain purposes. Sure. But the difference is that they're typically pretty short terms. So I don't really care what the interest rate is. But when you have a short term, you're going to have a very high payment. And that's what hurts you to, in, in growth. So if you can imagine you go out and buy a house for $500,000, you get a mortgage for 500000 Okay, you know, maybe your payment's going to be a couple thousand dollars a month. Well, if you had to pay it back in six months, you wouldn't ever be able to do it. You'd be dead. You know, it's the same idea. Your payment just, just gets so big. And, you know, that's one of the big negatives for growth. Right. So cash flow is fine. Why don't we explain for those who don't know what a personal guarantee is? Sure. So typically every loan that has ever been done you sign personally. And when, if something goes wrong, like you don't make any money for a few months and can't make that payment, they're coming after you. They're going to come after your business and they're going to come after you personally and they're going to file a lawsuit against you. And then they're going to go after your personal assets. And that's just reality. That's lending. You know, we look at this as a business transaction. So we're not looking at personal credit. We're not looking at the individual we're looking at the inventory and how does the inventory turn and how is the profitability on that inventory and that's really all we're worried about and care about uh we're not going after people personally this is a very different business model <laughs> i know it, it's a very different business model and um what am i missing <laughs> you know what no Go ahead. Let's run through a scenario so we can kind of make sure everybody understands it. Yeah. So what you could do is you go to our website. We have a really just I want to mention there's a really cool calculator that you can use in there that you can put in different numbers and see how it works. Literally on the left hand side as you're entering numbers, the right hand side charts and graphs will start moving and you can put in what's specific to you on how much you're looking to uh, pull out every month for, you know, paying your own bills and everything to, you know, how much growth you're looking to do. So let me do that. Click on the button to make sure you sign up and fill out our three minute form. We will instantly tell you if we will fund you and for approximately, we'll give you an estimate of how much we'll fund you for. Okay, so let's just say Norm that somebody comes in, they probably approximately have 100,000 in capital. Okay, that's not unrealistic in inventory, maybe a little cash in the bank, you got 100,000 in inventory. We, let's say we go ahead and approve you for that $100,000, okay? you you have up to $100,000. Doesn't mean you need to take that full amount. You could start with a small amount and work your way up as you need it. But let's just, for the sake of the scenario, let's go with 100,000. You decide you're gonna take that full 100,000 to increase your inventory, increase the growth, because you got a couple products that are just screaming right now. So what essentially we are, we're now a 50-50 partner, okay? We have 50% being that 100,000, you have 100,000 in capital, okay? So what we're asking for on the net profits, 
let's stop for a second and talk about net profits. Net profits are after cost of goods sold, after all the Amazon fees, after PPC, okay? That is what we consider net profits. We would ask for half of what we are in the business. So if we are 50%, we would ask for 25% of the net profits. Remember, you just made an extra 25% on that money we gave you. Backing up the scenario slightly, let's say you only took 50 of the 100,000, we're approximately now a 33% partner, okay? So we would ask for half of the net profits being about 16.5-ish percent. So it's always half of whatever we are in with you. So if we're 33% in, we want half of that. If we're 50% if in, we want 25%. That's the basic scenario. Here's the and, thing- and it, and it changes monthly. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, you could take 20,000 one month and then come back and need another 10, and we will adjust that percentage as you keep needing more to keep growing. But so this, this is, is like a rotating line of credit. We, we don't call it that, but there, it, it does have some of those uh, characteristics. Okay. Yeah. Here's the thing that makes it different, Norm. Let's say you took that full hundred thousand or that hundred thousand dollars, and you have the hundred thousand in capital. Let's say at the end of like approximately three months, you've sold through all that inventory. I mean, odds are you're buying it before you run out, but let's just use this for a basic scenario. And there's a couple hundred thousand in there and you have an extra, say, 30,000 in profits that you make. You have the option. Again, we say no monthly payments. You have the option to not pay us. Take that full 230,000 and buy more inventory with it and then do it again and then do it again and keep going or keep building the business. That's where we are very different. That's why we say there's no monthly payments. Now, of course, at some point at the end, if you decide you wanna pay us some as you go, great, and that'll pay it down. But also as you keep rolling it, it will naturally make you a higher percentage owner than us. So we actually go down the more times you roll it. And you could get all the way to, uh, I, I think Don, Don has a great story he needs to tell you about uh, somebody who used our money and just kept building it and they're looking to just basically sell and pay us when they sell. So, but that's the basics of it. So you've yeah. got a sliding scale on the percentage. Yeah, so whatever percentage we are, we cut it in half and it changes every month. So this way the seller cannot lose. There's only one way a seller can lose with us. With a bank or a loan, you can lose every which way. But with us, there's only one way you can lose is if you take our money and leave it in the bank because then you're paying us and you're not getting any extra value. Okay. But you're getting you're, you're you're always making money with our money so i wanted to talk about the net profit for a second so rob you were talking about uh you know includes ppc would it also include a rebate campaign oh don that's probably on you there it's a good question i'm not really sure of the answer we'd have to go back to our team on that uh, okay i really don't know the answer i don't want to Okay. So one, the three things I know for sure, cost of goods sold, any of the Amazon fees and PPC cost is definitely included. And uh, again, right now it's FBA. We will be expanding to FBM shortly, uh, but FBA sellers in the U.S. And, and that's the things we can definitely guarantee. But for that question, feel free to contact Don or I and we can look into that. More. I, I would love to know that. I would really we'll love to know that. that. The other thing you mentioned at the beginning that you had to be an LLC. Do you just mean you just can't be an individual, like a sole proprietor, that you either have to be an LLC, S Corp, or C Corp, or is it strictly LLC? It's strictly LLC, and there's oh. a reason for it. Yeah, there's a reason for it. We're trying to work with the lawyers to open it up to S Corp or C Corp, uh, but right now it's just LLC for a specific reason, that by not taking ownership in the company, but still for lack of a better word, owning a percentage of profits for as long as we're in, uh, you can't do that with a, with a corporation. With a corporation, we would have to own a percentage of the company. And it gets messy. And you know, so many people, so many sellers have said, guys, you're not even gonna take one or 2% ownership? And we say, no, we don't wanna own your company. We want you to have all that benefit. If you use our money for two years, don't make any payments and sell a much bigger company for a much better multiple you just give us our money back and our accrued profits. You keep all the upside. So there's no uh, equity play here. There's no equity play. Yeah. People say we're crazy, Norm. 
Well, I, my next question was going to be, um, uh, and, uh, I, well, first of all, I, I really want to make it clear that I don't have anything to do. We don't usually talk about a company or a system that a company has. Um, we are talking about a, a Cure Me today, but I don't have anything to do with a Cure Me. Um, they've asked me if, you know, I wanted to be an affiliate. I don't want, I turned it down. Um, I just want to provide another option. These guys know Tim Jordan, who's involved with seller funding, is a partner of mine in the Centurion Group, and he's been on this podcast as well. It's just another option to give everybody. So that's why I'm doing this. And um, anyways, next question, probably the most important question for you guys. I don't get it. How do you manage risk? Okay, yeah, so I'll go yeah. over that. Okay. Let me go over that. Uh, and just real quick, Norm, I mean, Everybody knows Tim Jordan and I, we're friends too. And, yep. uh, you know, there, there is always a different solution that's right for somebody out there. And I just want to address that. We are right for certain people, but we may not be right for others. And, and you know, seller funding or payability, th those other options may be perfect for you. Great. I, and, you know, good luck and enjoy it. So uh, mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear because, yep. you know, Tim is a buddy of mine too. Uh, so, yeah, let's let's go over kind of the, the bad, okay? So like we said, we are a partner with you. So at the that $100,000, $100,000, the $200,000 scenario, we get to the end of that three months, and let's say you only made 10,000 profit, then we only get 25% of that 10,000. You made 30,000 profit, we only get 25% of that. Let's say you just got back your money. You made zero profit, which is crap, right? It, it, it hurts, it's not fun. The, the reality is all we are gonna get back is our $100,000. We get no profit. Let's go one step further. Norm, let's say of that $200,000, you only get back 180,000. We will ask for 100,000 first, and you will get the 80,000 that's left over. And and you know from there, anything down from there. So so that is some of the drawback, uh, you know. And and that's why we say we want you to grow. We're a partner with you. But I've run into many uh, people that are just very poor business people, and they eat through cash like there's no tomorrow. Um, just not good decisions. Just, uh, they just might not, it might be the first business that they've ever done. So if they chew through a hundred thousand bucks and they spend it the wrong way, uh, I mean, that could just leave you out on the lurch, right? On a limb. Yeah, we would see that pretty early on and probably cut it off pretty early. Okay. Uh, yeah. we've, we've, done, we've done this with you know many sellers and I got to tell you, we now I'm gonna maybe there's a couple that have been really pretty poor. One that just never seemed to make money. Mm -hmm. And it, when we parted ways, it was all good. We got our money. He was understanding. And not only that, but you know, he's at at, at, thank, at, at Christmas. I got one of the nicest Christmas notes from anybody from this this young man. You know, because he appreciated all we did and all the advice and all the help. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's we're not just in it for money. To you know, be totally honest with you, like with him, it was a lot about motivation and about trying to teach him how to how to run a business and and build his business a little bit better. But we talk to our sellers all the time, which is really important. And our and our doors are open. You know, I, if we can help with my background, with Robbie's background, with our other partners' backgrounds, we're going to help them because again, we only make money when they make money. Right. And so if we do well, Norm. That means they killed it. If we do poorly, that means they just did okay. You know, so we want them to kill it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so Kelsey, uh, let's. Uh, there's questions, correct? There are. Uh, okay, so first question was from Victor. Just let me. Uh, your mic is cutting right out. Okay. Now you're not hearing anything. So, hey, Norm, let me jump in while uh, Kelsey fixes mic. And uh, just say, you know, it's risk reward, right? Uh, I mean, it really comes down to risk reward. P I, when I first heard it and had Don on the podcast, I was like, there's no way I'm giving up 25% of my profits. But yeah. the reality is you got to switch your mindset and say, I just made an extra 25% by using Don's money. Right, it's, it comes out of Don's wallet, by the way. No, just kidding. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Don's got a hundred million dollars in his wallet. Come take some. Come on, everybody, get over here. Right. 
<laughs> okay, so Kels, have you fixed your mic? I can see Victor's question. Okay, what is you know you know why I have Kelsey read these questions? Because I have such bad eyesight, I can't read the bloody things. So so let, me, <laughs> let me do it. Let me do it. <laughs> well, so Victor, what what if you have an existing Amex working capital facility? Is that considered another loan for a crewman? And Victor, I would have to ask: Is that something that you is against the business? Is that a lean on your your inventory? Uh, do they have UCCs, things like that, or is it basically a credit card uh, that you have access to that you're able to um, go out and buy more product and all? Which in that case, 100% is fine. Uh, so I would have to ask you another question about the UCCs. If they have UCCs on your business, then that would count as a loan. Okay. Hopefully, Kels can get us to another question. <laughs> and I guess not. So we'll just we'll just move on for for sure. the time sure. being. All right. So I, I'm just a couple of things. Uh, what like when you're doing a a profit analysis or when you're analyzing um, a product? Can you give us a couple of tips which will lean you towards? Hey, this looks like a great. I want a partner to. This sucks. Yeah. So, so we basically look at two things, and we built a system to do it. Mm -hmm. We use, uh, uh, you know, the v available sources that everybody uses, and then we built some uh, some of our own. And we uh, have data scientists that did the analysis and the algorithms for us. And what we're basically looking for is very simple: is we want to uh, see upfront that your inventory is turning over on a regular basis uh, and that you're earning a regular profit. And we do something pretty simple, we think, of 10% per month as, as a, you know, a break, break even spot, you know, a break. Okay. So, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, and, and if the products are turning over some, obviously within three months, some are after that, some are earning 10%, some are not, that's okay too. But up front, when we're coming in, we just exclude those products. You know, so if you have a product that you, you're selling over four months, let's use that. We count three months of the inventory towards your capital. The next month of inventory, you keep 100% of the profit. And as it turns to cash, that goes into your capital and increases your capital, decreases our capital, or gives you the ability to take out more, more money. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about like does the team? You've got an experienced team. I mean, yeah. Don, you're a brain. Uh, well, <laughs> you too, Rob. <laughs> but uh, would you help a company um, help better their product idea? If you see an area that they've got a plastic shoe stretcher and the spring is causing them problems, like would you give product recommendations on how they could increase their profit or better their prof uh, product? Well, the last thing anybody would want is product uh, advice from me. I'm extremely colorblind, number one, and it's just <laughs> not my way of things, doing things. But with Robbie, with, with his background, he's going to be able to you know, give great advice. And then we have a whole team behind us with tremendous Amazon experience and, and e-commerce experience. And they do all the research. And yeah, so we, we say to everybody, we're happy to give you a second look. And, and you know, you have ideas, we'll do the research as well. You have to do it on your own as well. And then we compare. But we then in the end, we let you make the decision. Okay, very good. How long does the approval process take? You know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take long at all. As Robbie said initially, you fill out the three minute form on a, and I'm telling you three minutes is a, is a max and you'll get an instant response. Then from there, we ask for access to your account, you know, the MWS token. So we can pull your inventory in and we ask for your, um, your uh, cost per unit. Mm -hmm. And that's it, same day. So if it was today and you filled out that form, you'd get the immediate response. You'd give us access to the account. We'd pull it down the information into our system. Uh, we'd ask for your CPUs. You'd probably give them to us, let's say worst case tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'd be back saying, let's get on the phone. Here's the offer. Here's a, a, a detailed proposal with something we call a key, uh, key points document, which is everything that's legal that is in plain English. 
in bullet point, bullet point form. So this way we can get on the phone and make sure you understand everything. We know this is new. We know this is different. We don't want to take shots that say, okay, you're just going to understand it. No, we want to go through it in detail. Make sure you understand it completely before we go forward. If you say yes, you know, we'll find you within probably about five days is probably what it takes. Wow, that's quick. Yeah. So if somebody was today, by the end of this week or early next week, they'd be funded. All right. Uh, so it looks like Kelsey was flashing something there. Uh, I'm back. Oh, he's back. Hey, oh, my hey, God. Hey, back. <laughs> yeah. Um, my AirPods were having a little bit of a trouble, but uh, not the ones we're giving away. Those yeah, will be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you guys handled Victor, I'm guessing. I couldn't hear yes. any. Yeah. yeah, we uh, did. We did. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we'll go right over to Darwin. Um, what are some things that can cause you guys to deny the loan? For example, I've been out of stock regularly, mainly because demand is increasing. Yeah. Well, first off, it's not a loan. <laughs> I, right. I know it seems like a loan, but it's not a loan. And, uh, you know, what ends up happening is sometimes in situations like that, we're going to offer less money than you would have thought. You, you know, because we're looking at the, the, the inventory, we're making, trying to make heads and tails out of it. And if it hasn't been selling, you know, we do go back, I think, nine months. So we do see what, what it was and we make some good decisions there. But now we send you, an, let's just say we send you an offer and use whatever number, $20,000. And you think it should have been $40,000. We get on the phone. Let's talk, let's talk about it. We, we see what you're, what you're suggesting, what you're saying as far as your inventory, what the problems were how this money is going to cure that problem. And we're going to come back with another counter offer. You know, it's probably another day we'll reanalyze everything, come back typically at a much higher amount. So that's yeah. basically the way it works. Let me just add in that yeah. we, we have actually turned people away that their margins are just too small, Norm. As we know, you can get hurt. If, if we <laughs> funded you and your margins are too small, all we're doing is, is taking money from somebody who's just not making enough. We've absolutely turned people down when their margins are just, you know, too small. So that's not our goal. Like we said, our goal is to help you grow. and We want to be a partner with you. We don't want to come in and give you money that just hurts you. But on that on that point, if you do see somebody that has, you know, the plastic shoe stretcher and their margins are really tight, but there's the ability for them to like all they're doing is playing with bottom dwellers. I don't want to I don't want to go there. But if there is a way, like, would you would you advise them that, hey, look at your competition is 20 percent higher. Why aren't you competing there? Yeah. And now, you know, you've got those small profits or small profit margins increasing to be more competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have to see that and we have to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, capture it in our system and in our, in our, in our in the views. But what we do, we absolutely get on the phone with the sellers and we go through what we see and we, we give them a printout of what we've what we've done through you know print out we give them you know data on what what we're seeing in in their inventory and where their issues are and where their positives are and you could drop these three products and you'll make more money you know here's the way you know look at what you're doing and we love having that those types of coaching sessions so yeah it, it happens it doesn't happen all the time but it, it happens and certainly if we're ever asked 100 percent i'm and, trying and to get into yeah, go ahead, Rob. Uh, I was just going to say, any of the products that we don't include to fund, those are yours 100%. Like, mm -hmm. in, in any money that comes in, you know, let's say it's kind of a slow mover, Norm, which that happens. If we exclude those from funding, those are yours. Any money that comes in for that are not included in the growth capital we're giving you. Those, you get 100% of that. And by the way, Norm, it's so funny you mentioned shoe stretchers. Mine were wood, and that was about five years ago when it was still a good one to be in, the shoe stretchers. That, you know, just a crazy story. I had a guy with a plastic shoe stretcher that came to me, saw that there was only a search volume of $3,000, uh, $3, told him he could, should go over to Wood because it was $100,000. There were only a little bit more. One was like uh, yeah. at 50 cents. The other one was like a buck 25 or something like that. But it was $100,000 difference in monthly revenue, and the guy rejected it. He wanted to oh, stick no. with plastic shoe stretchers. We I, I am not we kidding. Killed. Wow. Yeah, just but anyways, Kels, let's go. Oh, I do have another question about other platforms. So we're trying to get Shopify on uh, some of the business development people or eBay or you know, 
to give the audience um, another view, okay? Another platform to work with. Do you guys fund people on other platforms? Not yet, oh. not yet, but we will. So, okay. you know, we had to pick a place to start. So we picked Amazon for obvious reasons. We picked FBA again, because we can see everything very easily. And we had to just start somewhere. So Norm, I think you'll appreciate this. And I think your your, your listeners will, will as well. I have a theory in business. I have a bunch of them, but this goes back to day one when I was like 18 and starting my first business. And, you know, it's start stupid. You're not going to know everything. So just get in and just start. So what we did was we took our own money and we gave it out to about a dozen sellers. And, you know, here's the model. We think it makes sense, but we don't know. Will anybody ever pay us? I don't know. We had no idea. So we went through a year. We had no technology. We had no underwriting criteria. We literally gave money out expecting to lose it. We didn't lose anything. And we made a lot of friends at the same time. And we made a lot of money for people. And we did okay ourselves. From there, we built the system. And we and we got into the whole thing and built the company. And we went out and raised $100 million to invest in sellers. And so, you know, that's how, that's how we actually started. So... I was wondering how you could afford Rob. Uh, it's not easy. <laughs> All right, Kels, what's the next question? The best thing we did, Norm. <laughs> All right, from Dr. Kaz. Uh, hey, Rob, you said Amazon came in second as a financing uh, choice. What metric or metrics did they fall short on compared to your product? Ooh, yeah, so I've actually looked at it. Uh, it. The chart was actually done prior to me coming into the company. So I think Don could probably answer that a little bit better. But the statistic people we have are freaking amazing. Let me tell you that the numbers they run and the way they crunch it are absolutely amazing. But go ahead, Don. Yeah, these are data scientists. And basically, yeah. it's very simple. Amazon had a longer term uh, term than most of the others, which is a positive. Uh, the, 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 the one negative was the monthly payment. They had very high monthly payments. And if you think about it again, if you took out $100,000 from them today and in Q3 and Q4, you'd have you know $30,000 left to grow, uh, it, it's gonna be tough to grow. It's You're not gonna have the money that you need. You have to time it and, and get it done right. But those monthly yeah. payments is what kills your growth. So with us, yeah. by, not have, by not having monthly payments when you are growing is great. When you're flush with cash, send us a chunk of money. It makes sense because now our profit percentage comes down. We earn less. It just it, It's like the invisible hand. It just is in your best interest to make no payments when you're growing and to make payments when you're flush with cash. Yeah, I'm going to also mention, Norm, I know there's probably a lot of people that have, everybody has different scenarios, right? Like how much they need, how much they want to take from us, what, it, what percentage does it cost us? And not to keep reverting back to it, but go to the website accrumi.com, check out the accrumi calculator. You can put in what's specific to you, the numbers you're looking at. Because I know there's probably a lot of questions coming up that, what if I take this amount? What if I do this? Take a look at the accrumi calculator and uh, it'll definitely, you'll be able to put your own scenario in there and see what it looks like. And it'll probably give you a lot better understanding. Okay. All right, uh, next question, let's see. So after a few a few years, if the LLC wants to sell its business, do you also get your percentage? We get no percentage. All we get is our money, our money back plus our accrued profits. You keep the entire upside, you know. And and again, I swear to God, seller after seller after seller. Normally, the larger ones come come to us and say, "You guys are crazy. Just take one to two percent. Nobody's going to argue with your model. Nobody's going to argue." And it's going to be a big boom for you in a few years. And we've made the decision. We don't want to be in your pocket. You know, if you do well, we're going to do very well. We'll do better than a bank. So, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to do really well. We want to see you kill it. Uh, but we don't want to get in your pocket when you're selling your company. We want you to. And we will help you. We'll help you get there. You know, we between Rob, myself, our partner, Eric, all of us, the whole team has bought have bought and sold multiple businesses, many businesses. We can give you some advice, you know, firsthand advice on these things as well. So we're happy to help you. All we want to see is you be a success. That's it. Absolutely. Very good. I think Simon's got one. Yeah. Uh, so Simon, let's say we use the $100,000 uh, example and 50-50 split. 
if in one year we generate $1 million in sales and 100,000 net, you get the principal sum plus 25,000, right? Yeah, it actually goes down. It's less than that, Simon. Right. So if you think about it, in the first month, we get 25% because we are 50-50, right? But now just think about that. In the second month, you've earned more than us. You are earning 75%. We're earning 25%. Assume that you leave that money in and we leave our money in. In month two, you have much more capital than we do. So maybe we're not 50-50. Maybe we're 46-54, you know, and we get uh, you know, 26% of our, 27% of, of the, of the, I'm sorry, uh, uh, 22% of, of the profit. And then in the third month, it's, it goes even further and so forth. So over a year, if nothing else changed and we started at 50, 50, and we both left all the money in by the end of that first year, we're probably down to about maybe 30% of the capital and 15% of the profit. So your thinking is 100% correct, but it's actually better for you, you know, over that period of time. Yeah, keep rolling that money. That's what I was talking about earlier. Every time you roll that money and keep buying more inventory with it to grow, your percentage, our percentage goes down, which means you make more and keep more. Got it. Who would do that, Norm? Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got just a couple more, uh, about three more. Um, but this is from Yassar. Uh, can you support the accounts uh, that's break even and with your funding would help grow further? Uh, reason I say break even is because being out of stock for the previous three months and working back to the top of PPC. We would, we would have to look at it. You know, truthfully, I don't know. Uh, that's a, kind of an individual situation. But, you know, if you sent it in, if you went on our site and you filled out that three minute uh, form, you know, in, there's a section there for notes. Give us the notes. Send Rob or myself uh, a, an email, uh, and we'll look out for it. We'll, you know, know that it's flagged, and we'll know to, you know, take a look at it. Um, both of our emails are very simple: Don at Acrumi.com or Rob at Acrumi.com, and we'll both respond. Very good. Okay, uh, from Fatiha, she just needs some clarification. Uh, so say we borrowed $60,000, does this contract with Akrumi end when we repaid you $60,000? It ends whenever you want it to end. So you may want us to stay in there for two years and never repay that 60,000. You may want to start repaying it right now because you're flush with cash. You may want to then increase it and grow in Q3 and Q4 when you're ready to grow. Although, you know, some sellers, their products are, are you know, uh, most in demand in the summertime, let's say. That's when you're going to need more money. We're going to be there with you and we want to grow with you. But it's really up to you. We don't tell you, you know, there's no um, uh, prepayment penalty, if you will. When it's right for you, you're gonna, going to pay us. Yeah, Norm, I want to jump in real quick. We get asked this question almost daily, and that is, what about, like, launching new products with our money and that's not what we're for we're not we're not here to help you take the risk of launching a brand new product i want to make that clear but there is a couple ways you can use our money to launch those products but it's a little different so let me explain it, get us in with your current products start making some money pull off some of that profits which you're allowed to do pull off some of that pro profits launch with that money that's your money that you pulled off build it up for about two or three months and then we'll fund it once you've proven that it's successful we'll fund it that's one scenario the other scenario is if you're buying more of your current inventory let's say you're buying fifty thousand of your current inventory instead take twenty five thousand dollars leave it in your bank we'll fund the current we'll drop a twenty five thousand into your current product so there's the fifty thousand right twenty five from us twenty five from you but you just instead of having to pay fifty out of your pocket you kept twenty five thousand back Use that 25 to fund the new product line. Bring it up to speed, then we'll start funding it. Okay. Sounds complicated. It's really not. Right. It's super simple. Okay. So from Darwin, have you guys ever partnered with the seller after this process? New brand, new company, et cetera? I'm not really sure. Sort of. Don, give them a scenario that about the uh, person who was with us 
and then just sold their company and decided to start it again, I think was the whole scenario, right? I'm going blank, Rob. <laughs> so Don, Don's told the story that, you know, there's been a person that was with us. They ended up selling their business. They came back to us and wanted to use our funding after they got it launched and get going to basically just keep building and building and building their company until they got to a point where they could sell that. And uh, I think they're kind of a serial entrepreneur. And uh, Don's told this story many times, but uh, yeah. he's just drawing a blank. But go ahead. Yeah. So, 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 so this is a guy who, similar to the story that, or the scenario that Rob was just saying, he has multiple brands uh, and he has 10 new brands that he's starting. And they're all really well researched and really pretty exciting, to be honest with you. They're very, very exciting. He's got all the money in the world. But what he's doing is he's looking to take, I he just was, you know, he hasn't finalized it right now, but he's looking to take $100,000 from us and on his current brands, take out like 25 to 50 grand to start some, a, a couple of the new brands as those get profitable, take more money out and so forth. And he believes that in two years, he's going to have the 12 brands that will sell for $2.6 million and never to have used his own money after the first two brands. Once he started with us, not to use any of his own money, and which is fantastic and very exciting. And he loves it. And we love it. He doesn't really need our money, to be honest with you. But I think what he's doing is he just loves the challenge of the whole thing and to just be able to stand up and you know say look this is what i built and i didn't use any of my own money so it's pretty cool i don't know and if that answer, answers the question yeah to answer that question uh you need to be running for at least six months and be and be uh, profitable so if it's a brand new company no we're not getting in but as soon as you get it going for about six months show us that you're profitable we'd be happy to come in and help uh grow it yeah all right just we're winding down but uh, a couple of mistakes that you see sellers making regularly. Can you explain some? Rob, you got an idea there? Oh, gosh. Uh, putting money in the bank that they get from us, uh, not thinking outside the box to still keep expanding new products. And then once they get up to speed, come and let us help you grow them. Um, gosh, Norm, I mean, you know, the list is huge on, on different mistakes. But uh, those are just like the quick ones from phone calls I've been on in the last month or so. And the biggest, so one, that, the biggest one I would say, Norm, real quick, is that I, I see people coming in still not knowing their numbers too well. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I I fall back on one quick story of the, this, these three partners that came in, uh, and they had a they, they two of them were accountants, and they told me that their monthly ROI was seventy percent. Wow, great products! After we were in business with them, it was five percent. And they go, 5%? What are you kidding? And we showed them the numbers. These are two accountants, two of the three were accountants. And they, and they go, oh, we see. So they weren't looking at it monthly. They were looking at it overall. And they had way too much inventory. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So it happens. Right. Glad they're not my accountant. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're partners. They're the partners in the business. Nice guys. So uh, let's just exp – just quick question. Why – did you say, Rob, one of the bigger mistakes is putting the money in the bank? Yeah, uh, let me let me clarify that. Mm -hmm. Taking money or, or loans or funds and putting them in the bank does not help you grow. So right. by taking that money from anybody, uh, whether it's seller's funding, payability, or us, and just sticking it in the bank, that does not help you. You want to make that money make money for you, right? So you want to get out there, get new products going, uh, you know, do a lot of background research on it. Make sure that you're out there always expanding, looking for new opportunities. Norm, I know not there, there are products out there that are kind of what I'll call lifelong products, meaning that you could probably keep selling for a long time. But there's also products out there that are, are kind of either trendy or they're going to go through a phase. I know this from selling on Amazon. There's products that got old, they got stale or there was a new version of it. you got to always kind of stay current on what you're what you're doing. And then besides those products getting kind of stale, have those new products going, building them up. So that's what I kind of meant by leaving it in the bank and not going out there and either investing it in more inventory or PPC or whatever it is, and just keeping it in the bank, making what, less than 1%, why bother? So I'm curious about this. Uh, so you, you private label sellers, you'll go out and you'll work with, oh geez, I'm updating, one sec. <laughs> 
<laughs> How do I, I? I'm blind as a bat. Remind me later. There we go. Did I just reset everything? No, I'm still on live, right? We're still live. <laughs> okay, 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 good. <laughs> so you you work with the private label sellers to to you know help fund them. What about um, wholesale? What about manufacturers? Do you help them out? So I might be a private label manufacturer. So Off Lobby and I are starting this bottling facility. If we came to you and said, "Hey, this is our plan. We're selling to private label sellers. Uh, would you would you help fund that, or would you help fund these guys that play arbitrage in their wholesalers?" Well, wholesale definitely. Yeah, wholesale uh, you would. Yeah, yeah. We we have a bunch of wholesale accounts and we love them. They're they're great. Uh, that's that's great. Uh, you, yeah. I didn't think you'd. Uh, wow. All right. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, we took a shot with one arbitrage uh, account right now, yeah. and uh, we keep we keep a close eye on him, and he's yeah. done very very well now for about six months. Uh, but we haven't had any other re requests, so we haven't had to make that decision. Uh, but but you know, typical wholesale where they're buying from suppliers and so forth, they do very well with us. Um, and as far as funding a manufacturer, mm -hmm. not not something that's brand new. But yeah, so uh, it's something that we would look at. We we are getting various scenarios from people that we never thought of that our capital works really, really well for. And we've got an open mind to it. So we're not looking to do anything stupid or take ma major risks. But if somebody's got a good idea and is doing something good that works within our model, uh, let's let's see if we can do it. Okay, so very like, good. Yeah, that's that's great. And Daniel, that's okay. You showed up. <laughs> and I wanted to welcome Renee back too. That's great. All right. So last, very last question. I And I know we've talked about different scenarios throughout the podcast, but can you give us just one great example of how you took this private label seller and scaled them up? I'm just going to talk one, and I, I mentioned it earlier, but it, it was one of our first sellers that came on board. And within a year, they increased their sales sixfold and increased their profit eightfold. And when you when you see success like that, and when they say to you flat out, they said, "We never could have done this without you," and they couldn't. They were they were running out of, you know out of money. Uh, they couldn't have done it. And now they're, you know, they've got a great income and we've got great relationships and uh, they go up and they go down, meaning that they take out more money from time to time. At times we're at 50 50 and at times they pay us down and we're just maybe 20 percent of the total capital. It's they, they've really learned how to use our system to the best for them specifically, which is what we want. You know, we make less money when they pay us down. We want that. That's the right thing to do for your business. Do what's right for your business when it's right for your business. That's what's right for us. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, Rob, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, Norm, I, I've only been with the company a couple months, but it was so fun. One of the first people I brought over that was interested in getting funding, we ended up funding them for $88,000. And they were super excited because they're going to grow their business. And hopefully I'll come back on maybe six months from now and tell you about how successful they were. But it was so cool. Great scenario, great company. You know, I can't give all the details and stuff, but just amazing people. And I mean, it was so fun to watch them get excited about having this money to be able to grow their business. Also want to mention, don't forget everybody who's listening, Norm's going to be flip the script. I'm going to have him on my podcast in a couple of weeks. Uh -oh. We get to make yeah. questions at Norm. So <laughs> make sure you tune in and have those questions ready for Norm. Because rarely, as Norm and I both know, I'm not always on podcasts. I'm usually giving them and Usually Norm's giving the podcast and not on them. So make sure you tune in. That's yeah, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> That'll be fun. Okay, at the beginning of the podcast, just before we got on, you guys uh, created an incredible offer for anybody who's listening. Um, we don't take a, an affiliate, so the guys came up with a, a great offer. Why don't you explain a little bit about uh, what you're offering everybody? Sure. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll take the first shot, Rob. Uh, so basically what we would pay an affiliate is $500, meaning that when we sign up a, a new seller and fund them, we would send $500 to that affiliate. And Norm, you know, graciously didn't want anything. He just wants to help people. So what we did was we said, we'll take that $500 and give it to any seller 
that we sign up. So if you sign up with us and we fund you, we're going to give you an extra $500 to buy inventory right there. You don't owe us that. There's no fees. There's no nothing. It's just, boom, $500 for you. That's you awesome. got to mention Norm. You got to mention yes. Norm. Beard, Nation. Yeah. Beard, Beard, Beard Nation. Beard Nation. Beard <laughs> Nation. You don't mention it. You're not getting it. And after we fund you, don't come back and say, I saw Norm's video. You got to be up front. Make sure it's in the notes. Hey, look at uh, the beers here, guys. There I mean, we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So just uh, how do people get a hold of you and uh, any other type of contact or information that you want to give? Rob? Yeah, so uh, it's Rob, R-O-B, at Acrumi.com, which is A-C-C-R-U-E-M-E, Acrumi.com. Facebook, LinkedIn, you know I'm everywhere, Norm, so just hit me up. Yeah, and same with me, Don, at Acrumi.com. Or on LinkedIn, I go by my full name. My mother, like, like my mother's calling me for dinner. Donald, D-O-N-A-L-D, Hennig. And, uh, and I love that. That's good. And if, you, if, if you do link in with me or connect with me on LinkedIn, you'll get to see my background a little bit. I've done a lot of things in a lot of industries. That's uh, It's fun. And right now I'm having a ball with this. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, thanks for being on the podcast. I learned a lot about a different, oh, what's this? Uh, oh, Rad. Okay. Are we uh, S Corp? No, uh, Rad. The only uh, the only funding is through an LLC right now. Right. But the corporation can own the LLC. So you can get out a new, uh, open a new LLC owned by your corporation, which is easy. Uh, Oxana's on. Oh, I haven't seen you in a little while. Hope you're doing great, Oxana. All right, guys. So we will be seeing you later. Uh, we'll get you back on the podcast at some point. And uh, this was great. Just another funding opportunity for Amazon PPL sellers. So we'll see you later. Thanks for being on. Thanks, Norm. Thanks, Norm. All right. So that was the podcast. I hope you found it interesting. It's Again, it's just another option to different options that are out there. Um, Kelsey, why don't you come on? Okay, and uh, Rob and Don, uh, if you're listening, uh, just stick around to the end and we can have you, uh, we can talk after the podcast. But if you have to go now, uh, feel free to go and we'll talk to you uh, another time. But uh, yes, thank you guys for watching. It was awesome. Um, we got lots of people. I think uh, it was great for Amazon sellers to kind of know that they have another option. Um, but we have a great giveaway if you've missed it. Uh, we're giving away a pair of AirPods. So if you are from the US, AirPods uh, Pro, AirPods Pro, if you are uh, interested, you can go to the links. They're in every bio uh, that I posted. Um, just press on the link. You've got uh, the more places you follow us, pretty much the more entries you get. So it's a really great opportunity to really rack up those points. Um, and if you haven't yet, please join the, the Beard Nation. Uh, it's our Facebook group. Uh, the link is also in the bios. Uh, just go ahead and look there. Or you can search Amazon FBA and e-commerce collective. And yeah, come and join the Beer Nation. And the one thing that he forgot to mention. And smash the like button. And as always, all of the replays go exact, or right over to the, the YouTube page. So if you missed an episode or if you're uh, if you're coming in late and you just yeah missed a, a bit and you want to go back and look it over again, uh, just go over to Norman Ferrar, uh, the YouTube channel there, and we got all the highlights, the full episodes are there, and you can find it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> you. All right, everybody. So join us every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, noon Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for really helping build this community out. Uh, if it wasn't for you, we'd, you know, we wouldn't have, well, I'd be talking to myself. So <laughs> I hate talking to myself. I do that all the time. But anyways, enjoy the rest of your, enjoy the rest of your day. See, I screwed up. I can't get through a bloody episode without screwing up. I thought today I almost did it, but right at the end. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the. Thank you.